This is just a quick video in response to a new wave of claims that the Earth is cooling and that we have record ice cover in the Arctic. Which researchers are reporting this based on what data and published in which peer-reviewed journal? None, of course, because the claims are coming from people who don't read scientific journals. They get all the science they need from the Daily Mail. For the umpteenth time in two years, the Mail is proclaiming that the world is cooling. And to prove it, we have a record return of the Arctic ice cap in August 2013. Well, here's an idea. Instead of believing the headlines in the Daily Mail, how about checking with the people who should know, the National Snow and Ice Data Centre, the NSIDC. They monitor Arctic ice cover, and there's no record return of Arctic ice at all. In fact, according to them, cover for August 2013 was 398,000 square miles below the 1981-2010 to average for August, and similar to the years 2008-2010. to In addition, ice volume is going down, because not only is the ice extent retreating, the ice itself is getting thinner. So, where does the Daily Mail get its figures from? Ah, from David Rose, the tabloid journalist who keeps churning out stories about how the world is cooling based on the junk scientist's favourite technique, projecting long-term trends from short-term, cherry-picked time intervals. It works like this. Nothing in weather or climate happens in a straight line, because there are always dips, peaks and wobbles in every trend. So although we've had 35 years of declining Arctic ice cover, it obviously isn't going to move in a straight line. There are going to be bad years, like 2007 and 2012, where ice is at record lows, and that obviously means the following year ice cover will be higher. So all you have to do is wait for a record low, compare it to the year that follows, and you can create an upward trend. We saw how Christopher Monkton did this based on two years' worth of data. Uh, by 2008, half of that missing ice had come back. By 2009, nearly all of it had come back. And now David Rose is doing it based on one year's worth of data. That sleight of hand should be easy for most people to understand, but for the average Daily Mail reader, I'll have to make it simpler still. Now, we all agree that temperatures will rise in London between January and July. And we all know that you're not going to get a continual rise in temperature, with each day being successively warmer than the previous one, right? So on May the 5th it might be 68 degrees, but the next day it might be 64 degrees. Now according to the David Rose theory, this would send alarm bells ringing in the tabloid press, because it's a clear indication that Britain is cooling. In fact, if we plot those two points and draw a graph, it clearly shows that by July, London will be well below freezing. Now, hands up all those who really think that such an absurd conclusion can be reached. OK, the Daily Mail readers have all put their hands up. <sighs> As for the accompanying claim of a prediction that the Arctic would be ice-free by 2013, it pays to read the story rather than the headline, David. The BBC was quoting one researcher, Professor Wieslaw Maslowski, whose model shows much faster ice melt than other models. These other teams, the BBC reports in the body of the story, have variously produced dates for an open summer ocean that, broadly speaking, go out from about 2040 to 2100. And there's a quote in the same BBC story from another Arctic ice expert, Professor Peter Wadhams, who said, It might not be as early as 2013, but it will be soon, much earlier than 2040. My thinking on this is that 2030 is not an unreasonable date to be thinking of. Did you miss that, David, or feel it wasn't worth reporting? Just as the record low ice volume and the three decades of ice cover data outside of the one year you chose weren't worth reporting either.